All right, my name is John Garfield. This is the Release in Kings newsletter. It is February 1st, 2015. This week I want to talk to you about releasing the lion. This is a political uh, blog <laughs> this week, uh, although I feel it's very prophetic. I've, I've just felt something stirring in my spirit. I want to share it with you. We have a pretty good picture of what a Christian should be like in the church mountain. We what we look like in business or politics is not nearly as clear. <laughs> our theological stereotypes don't work when we get into our own mountain. People in business or various expressions of government like politics, police, judges, military, etc. are just as spiritual but they have different responsibilities, different personalities, and different levels of initiative. Listen to, uh, this is page 25 from Releasing Kings. The kingly mindset is greatly different from the stereotype we often carry of spiritual people. Instead of quiet, humble, prayerful monks, kings are typically colorful, bold, creative, and decisive. Kings are competitive about making progress and wealth. They naturally assert themselves to press for God's initiatives. Okay? You could say the same thing about a politician or someone in the military or education or any other mountain. Uh, releasing kings was primarily about business. So let me interject a thought about spiritual warfare. Our church bias paints the picture of intercession and prophetic proclamations defeating enemy strongholds. Now, that's true. Um, Ephesians 6, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against authorities, against the powers of darkness of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Okay, that's true. It's equally true that these spiritual battles are not confined to the spiritual realm. Spiritual warfare usually has an expression in the natural realm that must be dealt with in terms of justice. Criminals must be arrested by the police and prosecuted by judges and as, as an expression of God's justice. Generals defeat enemies and as an expression of righteousness. We love mercy, but we do justice by our actions. Those who execute justice are expressing kingdom values in a mountain that is just as spiritual as the church mountain. It's time to recognize the lion, not just the lamb. The Bible and history are full of examples of godly men in politics and the military who carried out kingdom initiatives in places like government and the military. They are also God's servants. Now listen to Romans 13. Um, Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which is God has established. Now Paul wrote this in a culture where there was no shortage of corruption in the, in the Roman system. There were slaves, uh, it was autocratic, it was dictatorial, uh, it was outrageous. People got crucified <laughs> in those days. <laughs> the authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God himself has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong, do you want to be free from the fear of one in authority? Then do what is right, and he will commend you. For he is God's servant to do you good. Okay, I'm going to skip the rest of this passage, but uh, you get the picture. Okay. So the next thought I want to share is that vengeance belongs to the Lord. Revenge is not an appropriate attitude for a believer. We do have to trust God to establish his justice, but it's equally true that when God does execute justice, he has two options. He can do it miraculously, or he can effect justice through the servants he's called for that purpose. He can do it through people. It may not be my responsibility to impose justice on another person or nation, but God does have people in the right mountain to, to accomplish exactly that function of imposing justice. As believers, we should lead the way in celebrating those people. Note that the context for Romans 13 is the last few verses of Romans 12. Now listen to this. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written to mine, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, saith the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, go right into Romans 13 and find out God has servants 
who execute justice. Might not be my job, but it is somebody's job. Okay? We are not pacifists. Vengeance, justice, and judgment belong to God and to those he's called to carry it out. Isn't that simple? Okay, so with this foundation, let me offer a few observations. <laughs> Here's where I get myself in trouble. There is a stream in our church and political culture that emphasizes grace and being non-judgmental. The influence can be unhealthy in that it leaves us either as pacifists or at least far too passive in terms of our stand for justice and our willing, willingness to support initiative. Our passive inclinations misrepresent the spirit of God, the lion. The sound of the Lion of Judah is not well represented in our theology. Men in particular miss it. The gap between our culture and this passiveness is shown in the popularity of the recent movie, American Sniper. As near as I can tell, it's the most popular movie of all time. <laughs> and it has, uh, it's about a sniper in uh, Iraq. Um, the second point I want to make is that there is an enemy design or lie behind the criticism of the United States being exceptional. Uh, the criticism goes like this. We're war hungry. We have a military industrial complex that requires war. We're not the world's policemen. We should not be a nation. We should not be nation building. The reality is that freedom is under attack by the devil and we're responsible to stand and defend it, rescue the weak, um, and carry out justice against evil. The USA is called to be a prophetic light and glory of the world, and our military is part of that calling. Uh, God's favor rests on it. We have to stop apologizing for being Americans, <laughs> for being Christians who uh, do the right thing. We're apologizing for God's call on our nation and on our mission. Okay, we need to be wise, we need to be balanced, but we should conduct spiritual warfare against these lies and call them what they are. It's a lie. Um, there is another blame America lie which proposes that bad, thing happen, bad things happen because of our wrong actions or karma. That somehow if we adopt a more passive role, then all our problems will go away and terrorism will stop. And that our enemies are really good people and Islam is a peaceful religion, if, and if we weren't so bad, they wouldn't attack us. And it's time to recognize the enemy strategies and the voices in this lie. The devil will flee, but only after we resist him, resist his theft, resist his destruction, and resist his murder. There is much happening in the Muslim world that is positive, and there are many responding to Jesus. There's a, I've given you a link by a speech of the current Egyptian president that's about three weeks old that is totally prophetic. Uh, listen to that. Listen to the sound of it. Our Muslim brothers and sisters need us to stand strongly on the side of godly values because it is in many of their hearts as well. They do not feel good about terrorism by and large. Most of them find our passive response to terror confusing. <laughs> There is also a very negative strain in the world of Islam that will lead to world war if it is allowed to grow unchecked. We have to admit that Sharia law is a gross injustice and that fundamental Islam is as dangerous as Nazism. The treatment of women is demonic. The genocide is a grim reminder of World War II. And our relative silence is sinful. People in the world sound wiser than we do. <laughs> and I'm giving you a link to Bill Maher's uh, uh, video clip. Their grasp of reality is unapologetically much simpler and clearer. Occasionally, they communicate godly values more than we as Christians do. To watch Putin invade Ukraine while Iran develops nuclear weapons is a wake-up call for both intercession and intervention. We did not cause either one of those. And I want to suggest that the devil does have a role in both cases. Neither of these expressions of evil are going to quietly go away on their own. We do not have a choice. The kingdom is waiting for its Churchills and its patents to arise. And what we have now are Jimmy Carter's and Neville Chamberlain's. So let's talk about 11th hour disciples. There's a kingdom dynamic 
happening right now that we should not miss. The roles of leading mountains of our culture, like politics, business, education, entertainment, and media, have not all been instantly filled by believers. <laughs> there are many pre-Christians in those roles whom God has already prepared for carrying out kingdom initiatives. Let me take it one step farther. They also already have his desires in their hearts to a large measure. They do need salvation. They do need discipleship. But they are most responsive to believers who recognize the call that's already on their lives. It's very exciting. And I was surprised at this verse. This is Romans 2, verse 14. Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature the things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. Since they show that the requirements of the law are written where? In their hearts. By who? God. So God isn't just writing in the hearts of believers, you and I. He's writing in everybody's hearts. Okay? And you can see it happening uh, in these various mountains. So I want to close with this perspective. I am prone to raise the historical specter of dictators, war atrocities, and the present corruption in politics. While we must obey God rather than man in the presence of unrighteous leaders, we must never miss the fact that our real opportunity to disciple nations will come through godly leaders in government and the military. Withdrawing from the culture and forming some exclusive self-righteous sect is not a kingdom option. Prayer alone, or dualism, is not a complete answer. We are filling the earth with blessing and the glory of God. His kingdom is sound in terms of biblical theology, yet not theocratic. It's compelling, but not compulsory. It's liberating, but not legal. It's inviting, but not inciting. Amen? We have to learn to celebrate great leaders, great political leaders, and great military leaders and thank the people who execute justice and, and uh, respond to evil. God bless. Have a great week. Amen.